Okay, this is really incredible. This is what makes my heart skip a beat. Well, I've got two Deep Sky astrophotography rigs running tonight, a color DSLR camera over here, and a monochrome CCD and a bigger refractor over there. It's twice the fun if you ask me. I'll have two exciting pictures to share at the end of this video. And I got that new Sigma f1.4 lens. Can you tell? Hi, Rudy. Oh, he's gonna go nuts, he's gonna go crazy. <laughs> so the good news tonight is that it's only a 50% illuminated moon and it doesn't come up until 1 a.m. It's actually rises with the core of the Milky Way, which is crazy, changing of the seasons, but that's later on. So the plan is a dual rig setup and one of them is the one you saw in the last video, the Triad Ultra video. The Z73 refractor telescope with the Canon 60DA and that quad band filter shooting the Horsehead Nebula again, the Horsehead in Flame. And I know you're probably thinking, my God, man, you keep shooting the same target night after night. I really apologize for that. I just wanna get some good moonless data using that system to apply that to my existing image to just get a better photo with this setup. It was just bothering me how bright those subs were with the moon, so I wanna capture some more exposures under these moonless skies and before that moon comes up and before Orion disappears for another year. Tonight, the main telescope I'm gonna be using is, well, the, the one behind me, the Skywatcher Esprit 150. This is a ridiculously huge and heavy apochromatic refractor telescope, a triplet, a super apo, and it does a pretty good job. It takes some pretty good pictures, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe you've already seen my image of Thor's helmet by now. I shared it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, everything. I shared it everywhere, Reddit. You know, for guys that have been in this a long time, shooting with monochrome cameras and narrowband filters, it's probably like, oh cool, yeah, Thor's helmet. But for me, based on my last version of it, taken with the Rasa 8 at 400 millimeters, this in close, deep view I took through this bad boy, my goodness, it got me excited. It's the background on my phone. That's the test of how excited you are about your latest image. Did you make it your background on your phone? <laughs> See, I know it looks like the QHY Pole Master is here to polar align the mount. I'll actually be doing it the old school manual way. This is here, believe it or not, to better balance the scope in declination. I just couldn't get the, the way the scope hangs out the back at that focus with the DSLR. I needed something for extra weight on the end here. And this adds, well, not enough, obviously. I'm feeling a little tired today, probably because I ate an entire large pizza for supper myself. So I need some, a coffee kind of might upset my stomach. Yeah, I've been buying caffeine pills to, uh, to help with my astrophotography. So just so people know what, what you do while I'm out imaging. <laughs> what? what do you got going on in here? I'm soaking my feet. I know a lot of us amateur astrophotographers, the backyard deep sky imagers, go through a lot of the same situations. And one of the one I'm really interested to hear from you guys in the comments, what is the day of the week that it seems that it's clear most often? If you can think back to memory, what night is it always clear? Because for me, it's been Sunday night, which is garbage night. That's why I always remember, because there's critters walking around clanking around and Rudy's out here going nuts. So Sunday night, for whatever reason, is always the night that it's clear and that's the case tonight. So this is the Skywatcher EQ8R Pro mount. I'm gonna flick it on here. Because it's bright enough, I can already see Sirius. I'm going to do a one star alignment on Sirius and do my focusing, have it all ready for when it gets dark out. It's already polar aligned. And I like to do this one star alignment before I actually have the camera hooked up and connected to the PC because I don't want that cable swinging all the way around. If I had my cable management sorted out and it was all neatly tucked away, that's one thing, but I'd rather do the big swing then connect it, just to be safe. March, what is it, 15th? 15th, begin alignment, one star align, serious. Here she goes. So this is the rather dramatic angle I'm working with with the telescope right now. Look at how, where it's pointed, all the way hanging off the one side like that. So this is pointed at the star Sirius that I'm using for alignment and focusing of the, because it's such a great bright star, but also it lies very close to my target 
which is Thor's helmet. So it's right next door and it's nice to align close to your target. So it's a quick slew over to your target after that and everything will work out just great, fingers crossed. Twitter mentioned that because of this lack of travel and the lack of air traffic in the night sky that the skies have been a little bit clearer than they have been which is really interesting so far it does look exceptionally clear out here but I can't tell if it's just a great night transparency wise or if that limited air traffic is making a difference because of this pandemic we're in the middle of right now so if you saw my last video you heard me talk about how hard it is to see through that triad ultra filter it's such, so dark to actually line up your target and that can be difficult so if you can see the screen here there's well all you see is a really bright light but there's one star that's all i can see and that's Alnatak. attack so as long as you find one of the brighter stars in the night sky you can use that to align yourself and then use test exposures to frame up your target which is in this case the horsehead nebula so i found out tonight there is a family of rabbits living under my deck and they've dug a little hole and they you know i can see the mom just coming in and out doing uh, god knows what but rudy is obviously on top of the situation it's funny the way he acts he's the way he is he loves cats he chases squirrels rabbits he chases but i have a feeling that he would purposely let a rabbit get away and not kill it he's just kind of like that so I'm not worried about him actually harming these rabbits that are, that are under the deck. Okay, this is really incredible. This is what makes my heart skip a beat. Look at the images I'm capturing through the Esprit 150 right now. It looks like a finished picture. So that's an H-alpha of obviously the Horsehead Nebula. Absolutely just gorgeous data through this monochrome CCD camera. Thor's helmet has disappeared behind the trees. I've switched targets. If you can see kind of the way the telescope's pointed, I've switched targets to M82. If you remember that one, the Cigar Galaxy, I photographed recently. Now I'm collecting it in RGB through uh, filters with that monochrome camera to build a, a nice image there. I captured H alpha only, so it'd be nice to get some RGB there. The Horsehead Nebula on the other rig, everything I've collected thus far, that looks like all I'm gonna get. So I'll build the best image possible that I can there, but it's Thor's helmet that I captured with the, the extra O3 data that I collected tonight. That's what I'm really excited about. So it's gonna be my new and improved Thor's Helmet Nebula in Canis Major that I'll share at the end of this video along with the new and improved Horsehead Nebula and I hope you enjoy it. It feels a little silly to make a video about astrophotography right now. There's more pressing things going on on the planet. But what I think is unique about this hobby is that it constantly reminds us of how precious life is on Earth and how beautiful and rare our existence is, no matter how short it may be.